Ladies and gentlemen, you asked for it. Here it is. An absolutely free back size and strength program is available on kaizentraining.com. Eight weeks to build a bigger back. Check it out. Link in the description, kaizentraining.com. All right, so we're, uh, I'm working up to a top single. My uh, goal is a 500 pound high bar squat. So today, I'm probably gonna go to 445 for a top single, and then down to about 84%, so 415 for triples. And then we're gonna bench press afterwards. And try not to shit ourselves. Okay, so here's what we did today. Um, we got a couple thick boys, we have a couple peach boys, we have one gentleman that calls himself Untamed. Um, so we did a lot of squats today. Worked up to, I think Mike, just being Mike, was always a gamer, worked up to 455 on the squat for a single. I know he's coming back from a fever. And uh, he did some back down sets with Alan at 355. Alan worked up to 445. Alan, we all have our own excuses. Mike had a fever. Alan just had a child, which is a legit excuse. We'll let that one pass. Um, and then he went down to 355. I worked up today, I'm basically working up to a top single. So I did 445, which felt good. Back down to about 84%, so 415, four sets of three. Also felt solid. And then we went on to the bench press. We're, uh, we're doing radical things here, folks, okay? These are exclusive training ideas that you won't see anywhere else where you squat. What, what, I don't wanna get it wrong. We, we did some squats and then we did some bench. Back at Untamed Strength with the homies, Omar Isaf and the one and only Alan Troll squatted a little bit heavier today. Uh, and today I want to talk a little bit about environment. Uh, it's something a lot of people talk about. A lot of these life gurus and coaches are talking about online. Get around like-minded individuals. You know, if you run with the lame, you'll develop a limp. That's actually a Louis Simmons uh, quote. And it's actually a good quote. And there's a lot of truth to a lot of these things. That if you want to be better at a subject, an activity, a sport, that being around people that are also driven and want to be better or are already better than you at this sport activity, whether it be business, if you want to be a lawyer, getting a mentor that's really good at practicing law. If you want to be a better squatter, get a coach that's really good about programming and squat technique. And if you want to have a good environment in the gym and have good workouts, get around good training partners. Uh, and for me, uh, I've been you know, insanely lucky over the last 10 years or so to train with some of the strongest human beings on the planet from Brian Shaw to Ed Cohn, um, Tom Callis, uh, who's a world record uh, holding squatter, very, very strong individuals. And personally, uh, and all again, all I can speak is on my personal experiences, these haven't made that big of a difference for me in terms of my actual workouts. Now, in terms of my training knowledge, um, my experience as a coach, my experience as a lifter, all these things are invaluable. I mean, I've, I've literally learned so much over the years getting to hang out. Um, interview and train uh, with, uh, you know, Alan, Omar, Eric Helms, Alberto Nunez. Um, the list goes on and on and on um, with the inspiring individuals that I've got to learn from uh, about training, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, my personal workouts, I'm pretty competitive, although I not that necessarily competitive in power lifting itself or in strength training. But in my head, I want to be the best at everything I do. Uh, and, I, and I literally get frustrated and grumpy when I'm not uh, getting better. So for me, training in a workouts, here I am acting a fool. Alan said, hey, distract me. Everyone just hears, sees the repercussions. But Alan said, hey, distract me. Yeah, I want to be uh, misfocused. So I'm talking shit on his hair and I'm talking shit on his gym. And I'm clapping these plates together. Uh just to just to have a little fun, and he did, he asked for it. You know, I'm not out, just out here being obnoxious. He asked for it. He said, "Mike, give me everything you got." So I gave it to him. Um, but back to back to the environment for me, um, it's great to be at Untamed Strength. The equipment's obviously top notch, and everyone's there for the same reason to get better. Um, but I already intrinsically just want to get better. Uh, so my you know training the other days when I'm training at 
uh, a commercial gym or I'm training at my friend's Ben Claridad's weightlifting gym or I'm training here or on the road or bar, bar Rebel brigade. Uh, obviously, some are more quote unquote hardcore environments and that may inspire many people to get after it as they're in the gym when they see other people working hard around them. Um, but for me, working hard has never been one of my main issues. I got tons of issues. Uh, you know, we all have our own demons. We have our own battles. We have our own weaknesses. Hard work isn't necessarily um, one of my weaknesses. So for me to show up to the gym, get done what I want to get done, squat the weights, squat the sets, squat the reps, I can do that absolutely anywhere. After this session, I uh, am back home now in Sacramento doing this voiceover, and I trained at a, a commercial gym two days ago, and I got all my light squats done. You know, I got my three sets of five done, and that was easy for me. A little bit of calm music. And I just need a barbell and some plates. But for many people uh, and many high-level lifters, um, coaches, and people that just excel in lifting, whether they're world record holders or people that are just getting better on their own, many of them have noted and said that uh, it helps them a lot to train in these type of facilities. I know Omar is a really big fan of it. Um, he has Fortis Fitness up in Toronto, which is a high-level strength and conditioning gym with Plenty of regular population, but also some really high lifters, some really competitive people. I know uh, Omar particularly, just talking to him and obviously um, discussing these type of things off air, which we do all the time, or off stream. Uh, he loves going to Untamed Strength because he feels like the vibe is always hardworking. Sometimes it's really turned up and you can go uh, really, really hard with some loud music and smash a PR. Or you could be more calm there uh, and get your work done. <laughs> He also loves Barber Brigade because the energy in the building is pretty electric. Um, and so, again, and, and, and Alan, uh, you know, bless his soul, created Untamed. So, you know, I haven't actually discussed environment that much with Alan because I just assume when you create an environment like this, it's because it's the environment you want. Um, that's just kind of how it goes, right? If you, if I, whatever I create has some piece of me in it and it is my vision, uh, maybe it didn't come out perfectly as my vision, but a lot of it ha was, um, a part of me. And so it has a part of everything that I like. And so you assume that untamed strength, it is, I mean, Alan's built that thing from the ground up, put in a lot of hard work. So the environment, the equipment, everything has to do with what he loves and what he did. I think I work up to about 4.45 today, uh, maybe 4.55, I forget. Um, but squats are feeling pretty dang good. Um, I'm pretty happy with my form. Um, I'm staying really planted in the ground. My bar pass really good. I'm looking uh, at these videos actually for the first time right now, and I feel very, very efficient. Long term, long story short, um, find an environment that is best for you. Um, sometimes there's a lot of power lifters also on the opposite end that are a little bit, maybe more like me, you know, people talk about the Dan greens and people like that. And although I've been to that gym and that gym has a really good environment too. Um, people like Dan green and Pete Rubish and some of these really strong lifters who are now at a big time kind of strength conditioning or powerlifting gym. Uh, they were smashing really big weights, training all by themselves in their, in their garages. Uh, there's YouTube footage of all that obviously back in the day. Those guys are really, really, really strong now, but they were really, really strong a couple years ago before they went to these type of facilities. Uh, and a lot of people like kind of that meditation style, um, solo style training. Uh, and I, I tend to be one of those. I do like going into the gym um, and getting it done with some of the teammates, training with Alan. Uh, it's really nice to kind of go back and forth in your rest periods when you have two or three training partners or just kind of set out for you, you know, um, Alan goes, we load some weights. I go, we load some weights. Omar goes, rinse and repeat. We're at a normal gym. Sometimes the only issue for me training by myself is my ADHD starts to kick in and uh, I won't rest long enough and I'll just stack weights and keep going, which may take away from some of my performance on that day, right? If I'm obviously just forcing Rest periods to be shorter because I can't sit there. I got nothing else to do. I don't want to look around the room anymore. Uh, oh, look who it is, my boy, Filipino Thunder, doing some Olympic weightlifting. Uh, Marcus and I uh, have been talking a lot lately, and uh, him and I are really trying to get after it. And like I said, I've told you guys I'm trying to get my squat back a little bit. I'm still number one focus is dieting and hypertrophy. Uh, but him and I are going to be training together a little bit more. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see him in, in, in the, uh, videos more often, uh, follow him on the Instagram. He's a, a good training partner of mine. One of my best training partners over time. Uh, there's a couple guys that I used to train with every single day for years and years and years. And he's someone I could always rely on. Um, so I'm going to train with him at least a couple times a week.
I don't know where I was going with that environment, but uh, find what works best for you. If you guys like training alone and you can get it done, and it's, it's, it's all part of the big journey, you know, the big picture of being self-aware. If you're, You have to be self-aware enough to understand where you thrive the best. Don't just say, oh, I like a big gym and I like the energy and I like people throwing weights, but then you're actually not productive in that situation. Look intrinsically. Look um, subjectively how you are productive and where you can get the best. Uh, out of your efforts and train in that environment and go hunt down those people and go to hunt down those environments i appreciate you guys new videos monday wednesday and saturday three times a week Salam mike i'm out of here catch you guys in the next one